Hi there, this is Alana. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. We're glad you joined us. I'm here with my friend and prayer partner and co-host, Jamie Hampton. And we're going to have kind of a humorous discussion today about what you do and don't want to put in your prayer room. So kind of a lighter topic, and these are always fun for us to record. So Jamie, do you mind opening this up in a word of prayer? God, we just thank you for this time to come together and just dedicate our time to you, Lord, and just talk about our own prayer closets and what we need in them and what we could get rid of. We just pray that you would be sovereign over this time, that you would be glorified in it, and that you would guide our discussion. In Jesus' name, amen. So our verse of the day today is from Matthew 6.6, 6, which says, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. So we picked that verse because we're talking about our prayer closets today and what we don't need in our prayer closet or what we don't need in our prayer room. And it's just going to be kind of a lighthearted discussion about what we don't need, but we will, of course, talk about what we do need and what are some things that are possibly useful for your prayer closet. Yeah. Okay. So I have a fun just for fun that I oh, haven't good. shared with you before. So I'm putting you on the spot. Good. Okay. Let's say that, and, and please note guys, we're this, this really is a lighter topic. So here's my frivolous just for fun. Somebody hands you a $10,000 like shopping spree to wherever, like Bed Bath & Beyond or whatever in order to turn one room of your house into your like amazing ideal room that is only going to be used for prayer. What are you going to do? Wow. Oh, that is, that's a tough question. Um, so I would want it to have, now, do we have to choose a room in our own house? No, or? because mine's going to be an addition. So go ahead. Okay, good. <laughs> so I don't know how expensive this would be, but I would. Okay, have, forget the $10,000. No, uh, no what's limits. Your idea? Okay. So I would have to have lots of windows. Yes. Um, I would have my house professionally moved to overlook the Turnigan arm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it looks I, pretty there. Definitely. Or anywhere with a view. Just, I, yeah, I love. Like a mountain view or what? Mountain view, lake view. <laughs> You're naming all the neighborhoods in Anchorage. <laughs> That's true. Those are the neighborhoods. I, Fair view. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. But That's funny. I definitely would like to have a view and lots of windows, lots of mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. Um. On the other hand, it's not so bad if there's not a whole lot of light because I do like to have candles. So I, I would definitely mm, want to have candles, like, yeah. a rocking chair. Yes. Oh, my goodness. We're speaking such the same language. Maybe a wood-burning stove. Oh, yeah. It's kind of funny because I'm sort of describing the little corner of my house that I use. You really kind of as, are. <laughs> I've got my sliding glass You've door. You've got your rocking chair and the got my stove. Rocking chair, wood burning stove, which your I don't. Your dreams have already come true. I don't even need that ten thousand dollars. <laughs> I'll take it then. No. <laughs> so I, yeah, and what else? I yeah, I definitely like candles and just kind of that cozy environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. What else? What, what would you Mine put would in be yours? one of those, I don't even know what they would be called, like kind of a sunroom. So sort of like a covered patio. You That's know what kind of what about? I was picturing at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With all the windows mm -hmm. and just totally yes. open. Yeah. Yeah. And I would have tons of house plants. Oh yeah. Plants. Yeah. Like shelves mm -hmm. everywhere. And I really like candles. I've been thinking about this recently. Like I've never been a candle burner. We I don't well, we probably have candles in the house, but that's just because like for power outages. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, like it the more I've been thinking about just things to practically help you focus, like looking at a candle, it's it's just enough activity that it's kind of kind of mesmerizing. And so you can focus on this candle or, you know, like the, the way I started thinking about this was like, I was sitting in the campfire last summer and like, I could have sat there for four hours and not yeah. have talked to anybody, you know, and just sort of enjoy it. I'm like, Oh, this is kind of fun. Um, so yeah, candles, lots of like cozy blankets. Are you familiar? What's that? Like it's a Scandinavian concept of like coziness. Do you know what yes, I'm talking about? I do. It's, I do. And it's all and like wicker baskets and, you know, yarn crochet blankets. Like everything about it is cozy. 
<laughs> and yes. like, that's how I picture, picture this room. And I would like always be wearing my bathrobe in there. You know, like I could be fully dressed underneath, but my bathrobe would be on. I'd have the most comfortable slippers in the world. Um, yeah. And like you, lots of windows, a really pretty view, definitely something. So there's privacy. So nobody sees me sitting there in my bathroom. <laughs> yes. And, privacy. Um, and yet, yeah. So you would have to be somewhere remote, but exposed mm-hmm. by windows. Yes, absolutely. Or, you know, like at night being able to sit in there and see the stars would be amazing. That would be my picture perfect prayer room. Okay. While you were talking, I Googled. So it's spelled H Y G G E, but it's pronounced Huga. Is that right? Oh, okay. I've never heard it pronounced. I've just know H- that a word exists. <laughs> yeah. It says here that the American pronunciation is Huga and it's the, yeah, the cozy lifestyle and it's, mm-hmm. yeah, Scandinavian. Yeah. Yeah. I could totally, totally go for that. <laughs> um, oh, and maybe uh, some kind of either I would use that $10,000 to hire a professional barista to provide me with my coffee (laughs) or I would just have a coffee maker or maybe a Keurig, you know, Keurigs are awesome too. And just have, have some form of coffee and tea option. In you know what, you know what I would do if, if like that money could be to hire someone, it would actually be for a massage therapist. Oh my (laughs) goodness. Wouldn't that be nice? I find that I can, like, I can pray for a full hour, like, basically nonstop if I'm getting a massage. And I don't know if it's just because I'm so relaxed or it's just there's nothing else to do to focus on. But, you know, like, I can't sit in a chair and look out the window for a full hour without my mind wandering. But if I'm, like, lying there getting a massage, I've done it before, like, I get to the end of the massage. I'm like, wow, that was a full hour that I spent all the way in prayer. So it is an absolute legitimate expense that I need. <laughs> that is really interesting. So my, one of my kids was in Sunday school and had trouble focusing on the lesson. And one day, one of the assistants who was a young guy, like a college guy that was kind of sitting next to him, he was like, you know, this is when my son was like three, two or three. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he noticed that Ben had a car in his hand. Mm-hmm. And the te- and he said something to the teacher afterwards. He said, I just let him keep the car in his hand because he wasn't doing anything with it. He was mm-hmm. just holding it and he was able to focus. And yes. for me, sometimes that happens too. I wonder if there's some tactile reason why the I'm distraction sure of the massage, because I've never tried that or done that. So that's pretty mm-hmm. neat. That's, that's, mm-hmm. that's another topic for another podcast episode. <laughs> massages. Uh, help your prayer life so much. <laughs> absolutely. And you know, of course we need to do some research on that yeah. one. Yeah. I'm thinking absolutely. like a, a research weekend, you know, let's, let's not skimp out here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Praying Christian women massage retreat. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if we're going to do this, we need to uh, get more patron patrons. So let's <laughs> jump onto our Patreon page, everybody. Cause we yeah. want our massages. No, again, we we're, we're just being totally silly here. We would never use Patreon <laughs> for massages. Wouldn't we go? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, let's, well, I guess we've kind of already started the discussion of just like what you do want in a prayer room, what you don't want in a prayer room. Let's be super serious for like half a minute okay. and say, you can pray anywhere. Yeah. Right. And there are a lot of people who are going to say, yeah, like if you have this $10,000, don't spend it on a prayer room, spend it on, you know, missions, stuff like that. You could build 10 wells with that $10,000. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, so for sure, again, this is just, just this whole episode is a just for fun. Let's, let's put that out there. (laughs) I like that. Um, Okay. So we've talked about our ideal prayer room. Let's talk about things that we don't want in our prayer room. So the first thing that came to my mind was electronics that will be a distraction. And I make that. You know what it should be? It should be a prayer room that somehow shields you from Wi-Fi. Ooh. I, yeah. I just read could something. Could you do it? About I, I could. Yeah. And I just read something about like the actual effects of Wi-Fi on oh, your don't brain tell me. and I body. Know, and, no, it's terrible and I know. horrifying. And better not to know. <laughs> better not to know because you can't escape it. But. 
I, I say unless they're useful because I do use some electronics mm -hmm. for searches. Um, I do. I, I love when I'm reading the Bible. I like, oh, I forgot to say Bible because I like having the Bible there. I like having my journal right there with me. Do you know what I did that makes me feel like a super, super old lady? No offense meant to anybody else who is of any age listening. I just bought my very first like giant large print Bible Oh, because my eye strain really has gotten to the point where I was doing all of my Bible reading on audio. And I mean, it's fine, but it's not it's not like you can pause and flip around and stop and reread. Do you right. know what I mean? It's, it's not It's the basically, same. it's just, it's kind of there, but it's not mm -hmm. like deep study. And so, yeah, I got my very first giant, it's not even large print. It's giant large print. <laughs> giant large print. That's taking it to the next level. I was looking at my phone the other day and my husband asked me like, why are you holding it so far away? And I didn't even notice. I was like, my arms are straight out as I'm trying to read this little thing on my phone. <laughs> Oh yeah. And well, and I've, I've begun to have to do that for just being able to focus at this point, yeah. mm -hmm. but that is, that's a really good point though. And so, but, but sometimes electronics can be helpful, like right. for searching for, um, I don't know. They're just, there's certain things that I do like for listening when I'm, to the praying Christian woman podcast that can be very helpful. So <laughs> you may do that in your prayer closet. <laughs> But I've what I been listening to our old, old, like old episodes. Like I listened to episode one last week or something. It's oh been really fun going back and listening. It's been cool. I do. I like to every once in a while, I'll go back and listen to some of the old ones too. Have, can you notice yeah. a difference between just the tone of the episodes as we've progressed from the beginning? Do you mean like sound anything? quality tone or do you just no, mean kind of like, just like just the tone of our conversation? Not really. Like I was expecting it to be more of a difference. I can tell before we moved, I can tell one of the places where I used to record, I can tell there's a little bit more of a tinny sound. Yeah. But just in terms of like our interactions, I was actually surprised. I'm like, wow, we sound like we still sound today. <laughs> if we went back to Prevailing Prayer, which whoever oh, of yeah. you listening know that we yeah. had a podcast before called Prevailing Prayer Podcast. Yeah, that would we, be. I wonder if like those first few episodes. If oh, we yeah. I think they were really stiff. We were. My son mm -hmm. even listened to one of those and he's like, you need to loosen up a little, mom. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So no electronics unless it's a searchable Bible or the right. Praying Christian Women podcast or our brand new Mindful Christian Prayer podcast. That's right. That's right. That would be all <laughs> right too. But what I do find is when I'm using electronics, I'm so easily distracted or oh, I, I, think, yep. oh, did I hear from so-and-so. So, -and -so? so mm -hmm. try not. Yeah. I, I try not. But I would need, yeah, I would need it to be something where I, I think I would want Wi-Fi disabled because basically anything that I would want to use, which would be some of those like guided prayers or things like that I could download beforehand. Oh, so that's a good point. Yeah. I would probably just avoid anything with Wi-Fi because as soon as I turn on that phone, I'm going to be checking my email. I'm going to be checking Facebook. Like, and that's, yeah. Um, so no electronics, no, how about, can we just make a hard and fast rule? Like no hard chairs, please. Mm -hmm. I like, think that's we, a good idea. We need the comfy, comfy chairs. What are those chairs called? They're like camp chairs, but they're super fancy and they'll like recline or you can rock in them. Do you know what I'm talking about? I have never heard of this chair. No, I don't know what this is. <clears throat> I so would you, like, like to know. Picture, picture a camping chair, you know, where you okay. just fold it up and throw it in the back of your truck. Mm -hmm. But they're, they make some now that are super fancy where like they're basically, they can do everything that like a lazy boy can do. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you no. Still, you, you know, you can still fold them up, throw them in the back of your car, carry them to your picnic spot or whatever. No, but, I've not heard of that. Yeah. Now, the question here is, is there such thing as too comfy a chair in <laughs> your makes prayer you closet? <laughs> Will it make you fall asleep? I could see that happening, but then part of me kind of like, it almost reminds me of like the baby falling asleep while mommy's cuddling him. Like right. that's actually really sweet and precious. So yeah. maybe it's okay. It's okay. Know. It's okay. You heard it here. It's okay to fall asleep while you pray. Although, which disciple was it who was called Camel Knees? Was that Thomas? Oh, he would, I don't he would probably take to difference with us. One of them, like the, the legend goes, he spent so much time praying on his knees that his knees were all deformed. Right. <laughs> he might take to difference with what we're saying. Could be. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying to picture how can we make this work if I want my prayer room to be a sunroom? 
but I also like to pace. Does that mean that I just need to make a sunroom that like yes. is a 360 around that's the whole exactly, house? That's exactly what I, I was thinking. I oh my goodness. That would be so neat. How cool would that be? <laughs> Your entire house. It would be like just kind of a halo around the whole it, house. It would be. And like I could move the plants to go along. All your plants would do in. so well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, now I have something to aim for. It might cost more than $10,000 to implement that, but. So if you want to support Praying Christian Women. <laughs> Lana, right. Her pacing circle. Now, yes. so what else don't we need in our don't we need prayer distractions, closet? Distractions, which again, I think for almost all of, of all us kinds. is going to be the, the electronics. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Here's a question. Or work. It should not be in your place of work. So. You, yeah. Maybe don't make it, don't make your prayer closet also have your office desk if you work from home or if you have whatever things to do or in your laundry room because I get distracted. Although I do pray in the laundry room sometimes or in the kitchen, but if it's dedicated just to prayer, maybe make sure there's no work that tempts you to do it while you're in that That tempts you to do it, I would say. But sometimes I actually, I'm going to sound a little bit out there. And so pause the recording and edit it out if I get into heresy, okay? <laughs> okay, we'll do. Okay. I, and a- actually, this is something I wanted to ask you, speaking about prayer rooms. So I know that this is just a light, just for fun question, but my question, my kind of serious question is, do you believe that physical locations can have different spiritual atmospheres? So like maybe this dark room in the basement and like, I, I tried to set up an office once, like a writing office in a dark room in a basement f- with like surrounded by concrete and cinder blocks and it didn't work. <laughs> and I could see also like trying to turn that into a prayer room. Like you just heard how much I'm into feeling cozy and, you know, comfortable. So from that perspective, but also from the perspective of like, you know, how I've got this kind of obsession with like listening to true crime stories. I just find them really fascinating. They're also fun writing research for my suspense novels. And sometimes questions come up because like a lot of these famous murders, like the houses where they take place in kind of become these famous landmarks. And so the question that comes up is, well, would you live in a house where someone was murdered? And some people can get like superstitious about it or sometimes this is again going to make me sound super weird. Like sometimes when I'm on a walk, I can look at a house and I feel like I can sense the personality a little bit of the house. Like, oh, that house is really gloomy. You know, like maybe something really sad happened there, or maybe the people living there just feel really sad. And somehow I'm picking up on that. Do you feel like we started out by saying, yes, you can pray anywhere, but do you feel like there's any, um, any actual logic to what I'm saying, or am I just totally off my rocker? If I were to say, like, there might be some places that are harder to pray in just because of something about that. So I, first of all, I, I don't think you're off your rocker. Um, do you know why? Because I don't have my rocker yet. I do right. not have my fancy camp chair, rocking chair. <laughs> to be off of, so you're not. <laughs> Good. No, but I, no, I don't think you're off your rocker. And I think, um, so the thing that came to mind when you were saying that was in the movie War Room, which is not gospel. Yes, I was thinking about that gospel. too. Yeah. And so it's, it's not the Bible, but in the movie War Room where, was it the person that was coming to look at the that house was, that was yeah, a going to buy the house, yeah. Said, someone's been praying in this room or something. Yeah. Like he and it turned out that that it. was actually a joke. It, it actually was that someone had told him that that was the prayer room, but still, oh, I think, oh, that's I funny. think that sometimes so you can tell like, or when I worked at the girls home in Vermont, this was a Christian ministry with really troubled teens. And there was one specific room where no matter who, which of the girls slept in that room, they would get really bad nightmares. Yeah. And it was to the point where like we went and we prayed in that room. And so I don't know. I think sometimes things like that do happen. Maybe we can't explain it. Maybe we are off a rocker or superstitious, but sometimes I feel like there is a spiritual temperament to a location. Yeah. And, you know, biblically speaking, I mean, what we see around us isn't all there is. There is a spiritual battle going on. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, I know that there's some people that would take it to an extreme and say, oh yes, there's, there are locations that are you know, cursed or spiritual Mm -hmm. or blessed Mm -hmm. or whatever. 
But at right. the same time, I, you know, while, while I wouldn't go so far as to say absolutely, I would say mm -hmm. if we believe the Bible, that there's a spiritual battle, that there are spiritual entities that exist outside mm -hmm. of, then I don't know. I mean, if you feel like you're sensitive to certain things in different places, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't see anything anti-biblical about that and yeah but maybe just don't go so overboard that you get maybe paralyzed with fear or something well, like that and practically speaking what you can do is choose a prayer room or an area that feels spiritually it doesn't have that light. feeling right right yeah. <laughs> or yeah and but one other thing though that it, and this is not related necessarily to prayer closet but there have been times and there have been times when my kids and I will be like, we'll be driving somewhere or we'll be in the house or wherever we are. And I just feel like there's a spiritual heaviness, like mm -hmm. almost like just a spirit of discord, yeah. just like, like a blanket over us and mm -hmm. I'll wage war, you know, and I'll just do it mm -hmm. in front of my kids and speak out loud and rebuke the enemy. And several times my middle son has picked up on that other times where he's like, I th really, I think maybe I forget how he put it the other day, but I think maybe the devil is, is attacking us right now or something like that. He's like, cause I can mm -hmm. just feel like, I just feel like we need to pray right now. So mm -hmm. whether or not those things come and go at different places or whether there are certain places where those things like the nightmare thing happens right, right. again and again. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's super interesting. All that to say, I actually like having my workspace be similar to the space where I do pray because for me, I see them going so much hand in hand that um, like I've, I've done two out of state trips in the last couple of months and I've just learned about myself. I, I don't really write when I'm not at home in my space and some of that is i feel like by spending time just praying in my office that i'm almost making the office like a holy ground where my work can happen That's now a really cool perspective because i would have thought yeah. the opposite would probably need to be true that it would that be, a distraction, be distraction but i love that I'm, yeah i'm sure it could you know but for me like i like that's why moving is so stressful for me. I finally figured it out. Like it's not the logistics of moving. It's like getting to where I feel emotionally and spiritually at peace enough to get work done. And one of the bit, one of the fastest or most effective ways I know to do that is to kind of like anoint my workspace in prayer. Like, do you remember we, back when we were living this was several years ago, but we did like this massive switch around where like basically every single person in the house moved rooms for various yeah. reasons. And one of them was so that I could have more of an office space. And like the first thing I wanted to do after we got that set up was like you and I got on the phone and we prayed over that space. So for me, I think that that's really, really important because I, I definitely do. Um, I, I think I need to have that sense of feeling at home, feeling grounded and like prayer is a really great way to do that. That's really, that's neat. That's a really yeah. good prayer tip in and of itself is to combine. Yeah. If you feel like you can do that and that that is mm -hmm. conducive to combine your space. That's yeah. Yeah. And like, I've got all my calendars on the wall. And so like, I could see some people looking at this and be like, Oh, this feels too much like work, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like, you know how much I like to pray over my to-do lists and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it actually works really well. Right. But, it's um, right there in front of you. Yeah. And so it's part of that prayer. And so going back to what you don't want in your prayer room, um, here's a question. So you've got this prayer room. Do you let your kids in it? And if so, like, are there ground rules? Like if you're in here, you've got to be quiet or you've got to be praying or can they just like be in there hanging out with you? Well, I think, I think that definitely is a case by case thing. Cause when we were talking about distractions, I thought, oh, well, your kids can be a distraction, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I just, I feel like setting proper boundaries is good, but I think it could mm -hmm. be really beneficial to let it be an inviting place for them too. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Maybe to let them know that it's a prayer room, that it, yeah, this is mm -hmm. my prayer room. There are times when I'm going to need quiet, kind of like uh, right. Susanna Wesley with the yeah, with her apron. apron over her head. When my <laughs> apron is over my head, 
you don't disturb mom. I'm praying. Yeah. You know, when I'm in the prayer room praying, you don't disturb me, but that if you want to come in there and use it as a prayer room, you can, or if you mm-hmm. see me praying and you want to come in silently right. and join mm-hmm. me at certain times, maybe you even have like a little sign or something you put out there. Like if you, mm-hmm. you know, I've totally you, thought about that for my office to have a little light up sign on the door. Mom's recording. Mom's recording. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. That would have to go on Instagram. Right. Right. Um, you know, we've kind of turned my office slash prayer room slash whatever you want to call it. It's kind of become the quiet room. And so like two of our boys share a room and if one of them just wants to be away from the other, the rule is kind of, if you're going to be in here while mom's working, you've got to be doing something quiet and you can't interrupt. So it kind of becomes sort of just the quiet room of the house or the sanctuary, which is, I appreciate, you know, and sometimes it's kind of fun, you know, like I'll have a son just sitting in, um, sitting in the chair by the desk and reading or you know those perler beads that you can put on pegboards and then iron them like yes he gets into those my youngest and so it's just you know something fun and quiet he can do and sometimes you know when you've got a loud and chaotic house I think it's nice if you can to have a, a portion of that that's kind of designated as the quiet area well, I thought of one more thing that we actually do that you need in your prayer room. Oh, good. And so for those of you that are watching us on YouTube and not just listening, Ooh, I, I just what saw say. Kitty walk by. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that oh, what you were going to say? Scoot over again. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Cutest dog ever on the beanbag. Super cute. So you need a beanbag with an adorable dog named Kitty <laughs> on it. That's cute. I thought you were going to talk about the prayer plants. Oh, you know what? I should have, but I, yeah, you know, it's but funny. Kitty's stuff. too adorable to ignore. So well, I, get it. I, I have my notes over top of the prayer plants. Like I can see the bottom. Like on, Oh, on I see. Screen. So you can't see them on my screen. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, for those of you who aren't watching the video and have no idea what a prayer plant is, um, it's a, it's this cool plant where it's called a prayer plant because when it gets dark, the leaves kind of fold up and it sort of resembles hands folded in prayer. And so I gave Jamie a prayer plant a month or two ago. I said, thank you, because on one of those out-of-town trips, she was our keeping the kids fed and safe and healthy person. And so she's got, we have matching prayer plants now. It's yes. like, you know what it is? It's the adult equivalent of those little heart best friend necklaces. You know, That's like- right. <laughs> Now the pressure's on, though. I can't let it die. As soon as she handed it to me, I said, oh, please don't let me let it die. Our friendship lasts as long as the plant survives. No, (laughs) No, I'm joking. Well, and the great thing about the Alaskan winter is the prayer plant is praying all day long. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I guess that would be the bad thing because we were talking just before we started recording about you putting your prayer plant where you record, but there's no light. So maybe that's not oh, really the best. <laughs> that might not be good. I'll just move it up here for recording days. Yeah, up and down and up and down. That's hilarious. Well, can you think of anything else that does or doesn't belong in your prayer room? Just, Mine needs to have a rug. Like, I don't mind if it's oh, hard floors, but there also needs to be like a little bit of a rug somewhere too. No, I like that. I was yeah. just thinking like in abstract terms, the need for perfection needs to be out the window because yeah. your prayer room, if you want it to look perfect, that's fine. But it, your prayers, your relationship with God, like just kick the perfectionism out the door mm-hmm. because, mm-hmm. you know, just look at it as a safe place, a place of comfort, a place of of honesty and realness. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I just think that, yeah, just the atmosphere and the attitude of perfectionism doesn't need to be there. I totally agree. I thought of a few more things that, that do belong in your prayer room. Oh. It's um, so like a journal or two or five mm-hmm. or 10, depending on what kind of person you are. Um, did I ever show you, Scott got me this really cool journal where it's a... Uh, yeah, it was this really cool journal. That's what I totally lost. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's um, it's basically for like journaling. It's like a Bible journal. Mm-hmm. And so the one I have is for like the first half of Psalms. But all it is, is like at the top of the page, it says like Psalm 1. And then there's like two or three blank pages. And then Psalm 2. So basically like you can write out 
the verses oh, or I like to do some me. of the cross references. I think that's so nice. Like I love writing out Bible verses just to, again, like be slowing down my thoughts, thinking about it. So I would say your prayer room, um, if you're like me at all, means, you know, a journal or dozen. <laughs> and, you know, there are some really cool prayer resources that I think could make for, you know, almost like having a prayer library mm-hmm. would be cool. Um, so like, I know we're both fans of Beth Moore's book, Praying God's Word, mm-hmm. where she basically like takes different prayer or different Bible passages and just sort of rewords them into prayers. Or, you know, there are all kinds of prayer guides for praying, you know, praying for the world, praying for the unreached people groups. Um, Well, and, you know, if you really have a room dedicated for prayer, you could have maps, you could have like whiteboards with prayer lists or, Mm, you know, yeah, yeah. maybe like a picture wall, you -hmm. know, like here's, here's all the people that I want to pray for at least sometimes. And I think too, maybe even just some inspiring quotes to have up on the wall, whether those are Bible verses or we actually, when Scott was in Bible college, we actually had a prayer room. For a while because we just had one kid but we had a three bedroom um house and so one of the rooms what did it have it had a chair i think it was a rocking chair and like a, a bin which basically was kind of like an end table you know so you could put you know your bible or your journal on it but uh i put up on the wall just different quotes and including my favorite um i forget the guy's name you know but the one I'm sure we've mentioned it on the show before, but uh, history belongs to the intercessor. Walter you know? Wink. Thank you. Wow, that was amazing. I don't or know did why. You look it up? No, I was going to. <laughs> that look just it up. came out of your head. I pictured it because I don't know what, yeah. where where it is, but I I look at it somewhere all the time. And That's I'm like, awesome. Walter Wink. You knew it, yeah. And <laughs> so sometimes even just things like that. Now, okay, I'm gonna backtrack like 15 years. The 15 year ago me was quite a bit different than today me. 15 year ago, me would have kind of been hoity toity and been like, well, you shouldn't need your house plants. You shouldn't need your cozy chair. You shouldn't need inspirational quotes because prayer is a spiritual work and these are all physical things. Um, I, I just want to tell like 15 year old me to shut up. Like that's silly. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, maybe you have something more gentle. What would you say to 15 year old me about that? Uh, well, I mean, that's, that's kind of an, I, that, that's an idealistic picture and maybe 15 year old you could afford to be more focused with more Spartan. Mm-hmm, that's what I mean? Yeah. Because, yeah. but I feel like when you have so many responsibilities, when you have kids, when you have work, when you have mm-hmm. all these other things that mm-hmm. maybe you do need to you need the, I won't call it a crutch, but you need the assistance yeah. of a place and a trigger for your mind and things mm-hmm. like that. But not to say, I mean, you and I pray everywhere. We don't just pray right, in our right. cozy little prayer closet. In fact, True. neither of us has our, you know, you don't have your circular prayer pacing. Not yet, but it yeah. is for sure. On and I don't list. have my closet, but we've got <laughs> places where, but you know, yeah. we, we know you don't need all that stuff. But those things mm-hmm. are nice to set the tone. So what I would say to that person yeah. is, you know, maybe you don't need that now, but it's really helpful for some people. And maybe some Yeah, and maybe not look down on people who do find that important. You know what I mean? Like I feel like God created beautiful things. God created nature. God created fire for fireplaces and candles. God created the wool that makes these nice comfy blankets. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I I feel like, yeah, if it's If it's something that he's provided, why not? And if it does enhance your prayer life, but again, let's, let's remember, yeah, you can pray anywhere. None of these are meant to be a crutch, but you know, if you find it easier to pray in an area where you're just feeling calm and relaxed, then yeah, pick a thing or two to feel calm and relaxed. You know, you don't have to go overboard. You don't have to make your 360 degree patio room, (laughs) although I'm totally going to one day, (laughs) but you know, Maybe all it is, is you buy yourself like a candle, you know, you get your $5 candle from Target and it's just something that's a nice thing to focus on. It smells good. It makes you happy and you end up staying more focused in your prayers. Well, that's cool. 
Well said. I like that. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? No, I think I think we've covered it. I yeah. Well, this was fun. I'm glad it was. To you. Well, and I would love to hear from other people. Like, what, I was just going to say that too. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know what would you put in your prayer room. Yeah, what design you your own your prayer room? perfect prayer room. Yeah. I think that'd be really cool. You know what I realized when we were talking about our perfect prayer rooms? I just described Grandma Lucy's prayer room almost to a Did you really? I did. So if you don't know, Grandma Lucy's this kind of eccentric old lady who shows up in a lot of my novels. And she's, you know, like this really funny prayer warrior. But she's got a sunroom that's been converted to a prayer room. She's got a rocking chair. The only difference is she has two chairs because she's so often like praying with other people. So she's got two chairs, but yeah, it's like, it's the sunroom, it's the plants, it's the windows, it's the rocking chair. She's got a prayer blanket that she, you know, feels cozy. I'm sure she wears her favorite bathrobe. I've never mentioned what she's wearing, but let's just go and retcon every single scene with Grandma Lucy in her prayer room. (laughs) And she's wearing her big pink fuzzy bathrobe. (laughs) There you go. And matching slippers. And match no, let's make them not matching because that would be even funnier. They're like <laughs> one's hot purple and the other zebra striped or something. Nice. I like it. <laughs> that would totally be Grandma Lucy. Okay. Well, let's end with our blessing and benediction. All right. May the Lord watch over your coming and going. May he keep you from all harm. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. May you rest in the shadow of the Almighty, your refuge and fortress. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day. May the Lord rescue you from every evil attack and bring you safely into his heavenly kingdom. And our benediction is from Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen.